Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to continue to talk about how we can find the area. Our learning goal for today says I can interpret area models to form rectangular arrays. So friends, we're going to learn about what an area model is and how we can find the area of an area model. But don't worry friends, it's pretty simple. It's a lot of stuff that we've already learned. We're just using learning some new vocabulary. Okay, so the materials that you'll need will be a ruler, a whiteboard, a dry erase board. You'll need the lesson seven module template that looks like this. You'll need centimeter tiles, which can be like centimeter cubes if you have those, and square inch tiles. Okay, so make sure to pause the video, grab those materials, and then click play when you're ready to begin the lesson. Okay, so let's start with comparing areas. So let's say I have 12 square inch tiles and 12 centimeter tiles. I created similar rectangles, right? So they both look the same shape as we go through. Do these rectangles have the same area? What do you guys think? Oh, some yeses, some noes. Well, they both have 12, right? So we know that the number is the same, but the size is different of each one of those tiles. One is an inch tile and one is a centimeter tile. So as I look at those, they're not going to have the same area because they're different sizes. So this is 12 square inches and this is 12 square centimeters. And we know that centimeters are smaller than inches. So the square inch tile is going to have a larger area than the centimeter tile. Okay, so let's check this out. So for this, I would say this is one square meter. So we're stepping it up and we're using even larger units than centimeters and inches tiles that we've been using. So now we have this one that's one square meter. Now, friends, I wanna kinda give you a heads up. Now, my screen isn't big enough to show you a square meter. So I had to make a square pretty much as large as I could to fit on the screen. But a square meter is about the size of a guitar, okay? So from the top to the very bottom, that's about a square meter. So think about that as a, a guitar when you're thinking about a square meter. And then here we have our square inch and one square centimeter. Do these rectangles have the same area? No, they sure don't. Right, because remember we talked about the size makes a difference in the area. How would the area change if we made a rectangle out of square meters? So we just did before, we did our two rectangles with 12 square inches, 12 square centimeters. How would the area change if we used 12 square meters? Yeah, it would be so much larger, right? The area would be so much larger because the unit of measure is much larger. Why is it important to label the unit when you're talking about area? So why would we say square inches, square centimeters, square meters? Why is it important to give those units of measure? Yeah, absolutely, friends, because the size of the unit definitely changes the area that um, the object the space that the object takes up or takes up space, which is the area. So the larger the unit, the larger the area. The smaller the unit, the smaller the area. So let's draw a rectangular array with an area of 12 square centimeters. How might we find the side lengths? How do you think we would figure that out if we just know that the area is 12 square centimeters? We could use tiles to make an array, right? That would have 18 tiles. If we multiply the side lengths, we get the area. So Let's make a list of multiplication facts that equal 18. So you guys are gonna pause the video, write that on your board, and then click play when you're ready to share them together. Now friends, remember, like, let me do like one quick example. Like one times 18 equals 18. What else could we come up with that would give us the area of 18? So what two factors can we multiply together that would give us the area of 18? So go ahead and pause the video, write down as many as you can think of, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. 
All right, so I came up with 1 times 18, 18 times 1, right, because that commutative property, 2 times 9, 9 times 2, 3 times 6, and 6 times 3. So those are the multiplication facts that would equal 18. So let's take one of those. We're going to draw a 3 centimeter by 6 centimeter rectangular array. You're going to mark each center or each centimeter with a point and connect the points to draw the centimeters. So let's see what I'm talking about. So you would take your ruler. We're going to draw the first side up and down of 3 centimeters. So I would draw right there for 3 centimeters. And then at each centimeter, I'm going to mark a point on that line. Okay, so now you guys are going to draw straight across, so you'll draw your three centimeters first, obviously, and then you would draw your six centimeters across the top. Then you would, at each centimeter, you would draw a single dot like I did, okay, and then you're going to connect those dots. So basically, we're making our square tiles inside our rectangle that we're drawing. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Draw your centimeter, that's three centimeters by six centimeters. Draw the whole rectangle all the way around and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. Okay, so you have your ruler. We would draw six centimeters and then at each centimeter, we would draw a little dot. Okay, and then I'm just gonna draw in my other two real quick for us. Okay, but you would go around and draw those in as well. Now what I would do is I would connect those dots. And you can see I'm making my square tiles inside. So then I would have those dots be gone. And I'm left with just my rectangle. So check your work by skip counting the rows to find the total number of tiles. So we would count by sixes because there's six in each row then we would make sure that we have a total of 18. So go ahead and pause the video, draw next to each box, so you would draw like right in here as you're skip counting. And then click play when you're finished skip counting. All right friends, here's what I came up with. Six, 12, 18. Then we know that the total area is 18 square centimeters. Turn your board so it's vertical. So right now your board is side to side probably. So turn your board the opposite way so now it's up and down. And then you're gonna notice that your rectangle changes and goes up and down now. Does the rectangle still have the same area? Yeah, it sure does, it didn't change at all. We just turned the, that it's um, up and down now instead of side to side. So turn your board back horizontally and then label the side lengths. So we're gonna turn it back and now label those units of measure that we just did on your rectangle. So three centimeters, and then what's the other side, the top side? We had six centimeters, good job friends. So carefully I want you to erase the grid lines in your rectangle. So we're gonna take away just those squares on the inside and we're gonna be left with our outside rectangle. So carefully go ahead and do that. And you should be left with this. So make sure to pause so you can um, erase your grid lines and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends. So this is an area model. So we talked all the way back in the beginning about our I can statement is I can interpret the area um, of an air, an area model to be able to use like rectangular arrays. Well, here's our rectangular array, right? We had those squares in there, we erased those, and now we're left with just a plain old rectangle, which is also known as an area model. So we have our two sides labeled. That's an area model. Pretty easy, huh? So how can we find the total area just using the labeled side lengths? How can we do that, friends? You guys remember? Yeah, we just have to multiply those two side lengths. Okay, the two sides that are next to each other. So three times six, which would give us 18. What's the area of this rectangle? Yeah, so for this area model, you just multiply the two sides. So 18 times one is what, friends? 18 square centimeters, awesome. 
All right, so now we're going to need our materials. You're going to need this Lesson 7 template. So make sure you pause the video, grab this, and then let's work with it. Okay, friends, so here I took kind of like a little screenshot, a little snapshot of it. And we're going to measure the side lengths of the squares on the grid. So go ahead and grab your ruler, and you're just measuring the side lengths of the squares. So grab this, your ruler, and measure right there. And what's our side length of one of the squares? Yeah, it's one inch, right? So then I want you to measure the whole side length that's going up and down. And what do you come up with? And then measure the top across and label it on your grid. Okay, make sure to click pause so you can do that and click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. So what unit make up this grid? Yeah, it's square inches, right? Because each tile is one inch. The side lengths aren't labeled, so we can find the area by doing what, friends? Yeah, we can multiply. I have an idea. We can draw the grid lines in using our ruler. That's another way we could solve this too, right? And then you could count those. We learned that from a previous lesson. So go ahead and pause the video, grab your ruler, and I want you to draw in the grid lines that would match with the center rectangle. So we know that we have the top line right here, so you could connect that all the way to the bottom right here. And then you could connect from side to side. So go ahead and pause the video, do that, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, here's what I came up with. There's my grid lines that I drew in. What are the units inside of this area model? So we're on the outside, we're square units. What's on the inside? Yeah, it's still square units, right? Because we use those to help us draw the grid lines. So I want you to find and label the side lengths and then write, the, write an equation to find the area. So you're writing the two factors that you're going to multiply and then write the product as well. Okay, so it would be like, let's say your equation, which is not for this one, but your equation could be like 5 times 2 equals 10. That's your equation that you would need to write, but you need to write one that matches this area model. So pause the video, label the two side lengths or label all four side lengths, and then write an equation to find the area. Click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here's what I came up with. So I came up with four inches because remember, they're each one square tile is one inch. So there's four, four square inches or four inches. And then across the top is two inches. My multiplication equation would be four times two equals eight. So what's the area of this rectangle? It's eight square inches, because we're measuring in inches. All right, awesome job, guys. You did a great job interpreting area models to find the area. So in your lesson today, in your problem set, it's going to be all about finding the area of just those area models, which is just a rectangle with your side lengths. Okay, so make sure that you're working on measuring properly with your ruler. Make sure you're working on coming up with equations to match your area model to find the area. Okay, so please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends!